Hey everyone, it's Tango Oscar Mike. It is Sunday. I am home from Hamvention. I drove home this morning. It's only about four hours. It took me, actually, it took me like three hours and 45 minutes. Um, it rained real heavily this afternoon. It's now quarter to six. Um, so it stopped raining. And I wanted to try something I bought at Hamvention. Uh, I bought a Par NFED Trail Friendly. It's a uh, 41 foot NFED for 10, 20, and 40. So I think I'm gonna try to hook this up and uh, I might have to tune it. So I'm gonna give it a try. But uh, my thoughts on Hamvention, it was my first one. Uh, it was a little overwhelming. There's so much stuff to see. Uh, the flea market is enormous. I mean, I walked several miles uh, just in that, just in one day, uh, let alone being there uh, again Saturday. Uh, and I went back this morning as well just to talk to some of the vendors um, to try to get some vendors for our ham fest that we have in November. But uh, uh, our, our ham fest, we normally get about 500 people, uh, attendees, and it just seems like the vendors just aren't really interested in, uh, in coming to a smaller ham fest. So um, I don't know what that means for our ham fest. We may not have it. We still may have it. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll see. But... It was great seeing a lot of stuff. Um, my thoughts, if I go back next year, um, I'll definitely go early as I can Friday, uh, maybe even stay over Thursday night. I, I drove out Friday, so I got there Friday afternoon. And believe it or not, some stuff the vendors had already sold out of. Um, Buddy Pool had the Power Mini 2. I was going to buy one of those. They are sold out. And on their website now, they say they are sold out. You can't even get them on their website. They told me they brought 50 with them and sold them pretty, sold out of them pretty quickly. Uh, I walked past their booth and I had a big line that I should have bought right then uh, when I got there. Um, but I went around to look at some other stuff and I came back and, and they were they were all gone. So I, I missed out on that. Um, uh, it was really cool seeing all the vendors, seeing all the equipment, touching everything. I talked to myself. I was I was 100% ready to go buy a Icom 705. Um, as you might know from my other videos, my Lab 599 is, uh, the TX500 is uh, at the repair shop in, in Reno, Nevada, getting repaired. Um, I'm not sure what happened, but I lost all TX power. It, you know, very well could have been something I did. Uh, I just, I just don't know what. Uh, that's the first radio I've ever had fail on me. Um, I still have my trusty KX2. Um, yeah, so... Oh, when I get the Lab 599 back, it'll I'll definitely put it back in service, and I'll be using that. I, I just enjoy using that radio, um, and we'll see what happens. And uh, hopefully, it uh, it was something I did, and I don't do it again. Um, but I'll be curious to see. But I'm gonna try to get this Par NFED uh, trail friendly antenna going here, and see what uh, how it works. So. I have plenty of NFED antennas uh, that, I, that I've used here and there, um, but I've always, this is like one of the first antennas that I read about and I thought it was pretty good. And uh, I, I've tried to get a pack antenna. I think the pack antenna is a great design as well. And I've tried to get one of those, but they're always sold out. Um, I always see them and then I hear that they're in stock again and I go out to the website and they're gone. So I have just never had good luck. Um, so I'm gonna give this one a shot here and see I'm not sure how I'm going to set it up yet, whether I'm going to set it up as a sloper or a, an inverted V like I normally do. It comes on this winder. So uh, once I get the wire off, I want to see what this, how this winder is. I'm not really sure how this is wound or where this is. Let me get to the end of it here. Oh, okay, so that's there. And then there's the end. It's not super fast to unwind, um, but anytime you have something this small and this small a package, uh, that's really not that un not that uncommon. So I think I'm going to try to set this up as an inverted V. So let me stretch this out a little bit so it doesn't get tangled when it goes up. And then let's go ahead and launch this up into the air. So again, this is 41 feet. And this mast, I think I have this mast go up to uh, almost 30. 
So there won't be that, it'll be mostly vertical, but I think that'll be, that'll be fine. Don't want to go too high. And maybe I shouldn't go up the whole way, but I think I'm going to, I'm going to do that to start. Because that's what I normally do. And that's caught on me. Okay, so that's maximum height. Um, I do need to get a piece of, uh, a little piece of cordage on this. So let me go grab that. Well, let me finish my talking here about uh, Hamvention. Uh, it was great meeting all the, the YouTubers and um, fans of other YouTube pages. Even some people recognize me, which is kind of weird. I've never had that happen before. Uh, but everybody I've met uh, was just fantastic. Uh, lots of fun to hang around. Um, and that's something, you know, you when you do the live streams and stuff like that on YouTube with these guys, um, they are fun. It's, it seems always seem like a good time. And I got to tell you, it's, uh, it's even better in person. There's a lot of fun and uh, good time. And those guys work so hard. They were filming constantly. Uh, trying to look at products and you know get shots of the ham fest and everything else i mean they were going to the forums doing everything they could to get footage so you guys can watch it on youtube i honestly didn't film anything i took my gopro um but i i really didn't film anything i, I was so overwhelmed with watching everything i just didn't want to ruin that experience by trying to film plus those guys do such a great job there's nothing that i could do that would be even remotely close to what they were doing so i decided not to film anything and just enjoy it and uh observe i watched them and uh had a great time we went uh to the hope hotel to watch the band sorry i don't know the name of the band but charlie uh posted a video of the band singing the songs and they altered the lyrics to to ham radio related and some of them were just great. Go out and watch that video. It hilarious. We were laughing pretty hard. We had a good time. Um, and then last night we went to the Troll Pub in, in Dayton. And uh, it was a great place. Uh, I had, uh, I asked if they had bourbon. They said they had 300 bourbons. But every bourbon we asked to uh, which one we wanted, they told us we were out of. So the joke was that they have 300 bourbons, but uh, 295 of them are uh, they're out of, um, but they, the, the bartender did recommend a local Ohio bourbon. I can't remember what it was, but it was a wheat bourbon and, and it was pretty good. I got to say it, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. It was, it was drinkable, not my favorite, but it was still pretty good. Um, but yeah, so we had a great time at Hamvention and, uh, all those guys meeting all those guys. Uh, it was just fantastic and really had a great time. Everybody was really nice and, um, Carlos was going to try to do a parachute mobile, but he couldn't do the weather. Uh, me and Carlos sat at a bar at the Hope Hotel and, and talked for a while. And a uh, great guy, lots of fun. Uh, I talked to Kyle and Ham Radio Dude uh, quite a bit. And uh, just, like I said, lots of, uh, lots of great people in this community. And uh, saw Bob Heil. Uh, I saw Rhea. I didn't get to actually talk to her. Uh, I was actually kind of looking forward to... to uh, Talking to Rhea, she's, uh, you know, as an ARL representative, I think she's doing a heck of a job. And uh, I think her videos reflect that. She kind of gives you insights that other people don't. Um, so I enjoy her videos as well. Josh um, was there with a ham radio crash course. Uh, great guy. Just, you know, everybody was so busy, uh, but we all managed to have a good time and hang out with each other. And uh, just a, a great time. Even with the weather, uh, we got some rain. Still lots of fun. So let me get some cordage and get this antenna on the air because there's people doing POTA. Okay, so just having the antenna in an inverted V, uh, it's about three to one. Um, it's actually the lowest is uh, 1.5 at about uh, 7.032. Um, so it's really low in the band, so I should shorten it And I'm wondering if I should just lower it a little bit and it is Hang on, let me fix this. Let's try it. Let me fix it. Uh, 
Okay, in that configuration, uh, it's about 1.25 to 1 on both 20 and 40. Um, but I really want to be at the truck and have the antenna out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the feed, uh, the matchbox, and put it at the top and stretch the antenna out like an inverted sloper. So the feed will be up real high and the end of the antenna will be down real low. Um, so it's definitely better to do this stuff now than out in the field when you're trying to figure out what your SWR is. Uh, figure out why your antenna isn't working properly. So let's check 40 meters. SWR is 1.5. Let me check the sweep, see where it's at in the band. And it's about the same spot it was before in the band. Maybe a little, uh, might need a little, it might need shortened a little more. So let's check, let's check 20 meters. On 20 meters, 1.6. So both of them went up, but it does need shortened now too. Or yeah, the wire needs shortened for both. For both. If I shorten the wire, the lowest dip though on 20 is 1.5. Um, so it's not as good as it was before, but if I was operating, uh, if I wanted to chase parks on the air, now I can do it right from the truck. So let me shorten it just a little bit, um, take, fold it over a little more, get another reading, and then I'll try to make a contact. Okay, so now there's like a foot and a half of wire folded back on itself. Let me check the sweep. Twenty meters is good at one point five. It can actually still be a little shorter, which is crazy. Now let's try forty meters. Sweeping. Here comes the dip. The dip on this tenant antenna is really sharp, and the dip is uh, I'm right where I want to be. I'm at 1.27 on 40. Um, so let's see. November 3, Whiskey Sierra. A November 3, Whiskey Sierra. November 3, Whiskey Sierra. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Mike? This is Tom. You're a uh, five nine here, five nine. Hey, Roger. Thank you for the five nine. I got you as, as a five five here into this big hole by the lake over here in West Virginia. QSL. Uh, QSL. I know right where you're at. Uh, have, hope you have a good activation. Seventy three. Hey, Roger. Roger. Hey, everybody. This is the guy that opened this park up. Remember. He's the one who first opened this park here last year. So he's the guy who started it up. Anyway, thanks for keeping Tom. Have a good one. Talk to you later. <laughs> 73. Alpha Bravo 1 Alpha. QRZ. 001 Charlie November. QRZ. November 3, Whiskey Sierra. November 3, Whiskey Sierra. You are 59 into Park Kilo 1716. Uh, QSL, I also have U59 into Western Pennsylvania. Thanks for the activation. Thank you for the 59 and just to confirm that, uh, sorry, November 3, Whiskey Sierra. Uh, QSL, QSL. 73. 73. Kilo 1, Papa Charlie November at Park Kilo 1716. Washington, America 2. It is, uh, 2238. I got distracted by a deer in the backyard, so I should turn the camera around. So that was Connecticut. So the antenna is working this configuration so far. Um, nothing really long distance, but uh, happy. Let's see. It's Ohio. Okay, everybody else has been QRT on that. Let's go to 20.
November 3, Whiskey Sierra. Uh, QSL will also give you a 5 4 5 4 from uh, United States, Pennsylvania. Uh, 7 3. So that was England. Uh, so it just depends on the band conditions on who you're going to get. Uh, hopefully, you could hear that. It's, it's getting a little windy, so sorry if there's some wind noise off the check when I go in. But uh, I think I'm done. I think I'm going to leave the antenna the way it is. I have quite a bit folded over, but um, I don't want to cut it just yet because once you cut it, then <laughs> putting wire back on is not always as fun. Um, I don't like how this wire coils. Um, when you relax the wire, it ha seems to have a memory and bunches up a bit. Uh, I do have some soda beams wire, which I like. It's a silicone-based uh, uh, casing, which doesn't coil, which doesn't seem to coil. So I may be, I may just replace this wire. We'll see. It's something I can consider doing. Um, this wire seems very durable, though. It's a, it's got like the, a harder um, casing on it. Yeah, so three contacts, uh, West Virginia, Connecticut, and then England. Uh, so I'm happy. It, it works, and it works in this configuration. This is something I could do in a park uh, by putting the feed point up as high as I can and running that out. Um, I made contacts on uh, two on twenty, and then or two on forty, and then that one was that one was on twenty. Uh, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. Uh, the antenna works. Um, at least I know what configuration seemed to work better and it definitely wor seems to work better in a sloper than an inverted V or kind of like an in yeah, inverted V because we're looking good and inverted V just with one pass. But the sloper seems to work the best for tuning whether it be the feed point at the ground level or the feed point up high away from the truck. Um, but at least now I know I could set up set a chair next to the tailgate and operate right here with this antenna. Um, I'm gonna see it's gonna take some time winding it up and see how it uh, how it is um, I kind of like to take the match uh, match unit apart and see what it is see if it's a 49 to 1 or if it's something else It might be a 64 to 1 or who knows um, But yeah, so I'm, I'm happy with the purchase. It's working uh, Sometimes you have to play with them to figure out what what configuration that antenna uh, is going to work at but um we, I took tomorrow off to spend time with my wife since I was away for the weekend and away from Augie. Um, and we're probably going to go do a hike tomorrow. Uh, the park we're talking about doing is in Tomlinson Park. I've activated there before, so maybe after we do a hike, uh, I can talk them into hanging around a little bit so I can do a quick park activation. Um, it's only supposed to be in the 60s tomorrow, which is great weather for hiking. And uh, so we'll see. But uh, thanks for watching. This is Tango Oscar Mike. 73. Take care. Tango Oscar Mike.